Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to do a couple of things before I get started. Amen. Before we release the word of the Lord to you. Amen. Um, I'm believing God for something. So I wanted to, to, to let you know there is some pen and some paper up here. If at any given time during worship or even for right now while I'm while we're talking, I can put it up there. I can put it on the front row right here. If you want to, what, what I want you to do is there's a prayer box. If you're believing God for something, I want you to put it in that box. I want you to bring your prayer request up. And can we put it right on, on the front row right here? This one right here. Um, I want you to put the prayers. And then I want you to put it in, bring it up and put it in that box. Amen. I got you on some of them. Well, you got it all. You're the best honey ever. There's no honey like you, honey. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you have your Bibles, I won't be before you long. I believe I have a word. Amen. Amen. God bless everybody who showed up. Got a couple of family members in the building. Aunt Ruby is in the building. Cousin John is in the building. The minister John and my other cousin John, the one that's always in the building. Uh, cousin, ain't everybody just, I'm so excited because when family's in the building, amen, things begin to happen. Amen. The pleasant are in the building. Yes. But you know what, though? I love everybody that's in the building. But I am so glad that God is in the building. Amen. I am so glad that God is in the building. And for all those who are on the Internet, amen, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the grams, all the books. If there is something that you are believing God for, I want you to put it in uh, the, the prayer uh, line. We can. We have people who pray for it year round. We've been praying for Jesus a long time. Uh, what, going on three, going on three years. Um, there are a lot of times I can't say anything because I'm surrounded by kids, but they'll see me lift my hands up and they'll be like, what are you doing? Well, I'm just praying. But I want you, if you have your Bibles, I won't be before you long. I believe the Lord had something that he wanted me to tell you. You ready? In the book of Philippians. Yes. Go ahead. While you're turning to Philippians, uh, we I don't know if you said this. I, I apologize if I missed it. This prayer box is year round. It's not just for today. So it'll be here. We'll have paper year round, no matter if it's in during worship, no matter if it's, you know, during the word, as the Lord gives you something or you have a prayer request, write it down and put it in the box. It's year round and it's not a distraction for you to put a prayer in the prayer box during the time of the word, during worship. Those of you who are online, you can put it in the comments or go to the uh, website and put it, put a prayer request there. And, you know, we're definitely going to pray for it. Amen. Amen, sister. And that's a part of your offering as well. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me. To the book of Philippians chapter number one. Amen. Philippians chapter number one. I won't be before you long, but I do believe I have something that the Lord wants me to say. Amen. Won't be before you long. When you have it, just stand. Amen. It says, Paul. And Timothy, servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints 
in, G in Christ Jesus, who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who has began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. I want you to Pray with me. Father, we bless you. We honor you, God. We lift you up, God. We thank you, God. God, make me the first hearer of your word. We praise you. We honor you. We bless you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. I want to talk to you for just a second and let you know that our God is champion, our God is king, our God is intimate, our God is the ultimate, our God is awesome. On this new year, I, I want you to understand something about our God, and I believe God gave me a message to tell you, and, and I, I wanted you to, to hear it firsthand, that our God is past finding out. Our God is king. Our God is the which was, the which is, and without ever moving, the which is to come. Our God is present, past, and future all at the same time. Our God is eternal, yet timely. Our God is swift, yet steadfast. Our God is unmovable. Our God is everything and his, from his beginning, and he has none. He's always been that type of God. And, and, I, and, I, and I want to let you know that because the scripture says that he who has began a good work in you will fulfill it until the day of redemption. And while I was praying and I was praying for you, and I, I, I believe I heard God saying that you've been faithful. And I know a lot of people on every New Year's, they come and they say a whole lot of stuff. And they say a whole lot of things. Oh, God is going to, it's time for you to do this and do that and leave this and leave that. And I believe I heard God say this. Do you trust me? I believe I heard God saying over and over and over again that I am willing to complete it. There's a lot of things that people have been believing God for in the past few years. And they've been believing God and they've been trusting God and they've been calling on the name of God and they've been laying out and they've been doing all these things and they've been praying and they've been and, and sometimes we get so ready to move on to a new thing but one of the reasons why we try to move on to something new is because we haven't seen God complete what he said he was going to complete yet sometimes us trying to move on is a sign that we kind of gave up on what we believe God had said and so one of the things that God was asking me over and over and over and over again, is anything too hard for me? You see, in our scripture, we find several hundred years ago, a thousand, whatever it was that Abraham was praying and he had believed God and God told Abraham that he was going to have a son. And the Bible declared that when God was talking to Abraham, Sarah had laughed. And God said, Sarah, what, what, what's funny? What are you laughing about? And Sarah was thinking that while I'm yet still old, will you allow me to have a son now? And God asked a profound question. God says, is anything too hard for the Lord? That's a rhetorical question because we already know that there's nothing that's too hard for the Lord. The Lord was saying, is anything, child, too hard for me? Is there anything that you can think of or phantom that I cannot do? Are my arms short that I can't perform this thing? And God is asking the question right now to us. Minister 
Pringle asked the question the other day, and, and, and um, I think it was Minister Pringle or, or Minister Mike, one of them asked the question the other day, and they said, if God was going to bless you and pay off all your debts, remember he said, he said, how long would it take you to get back in debt? It was Minister Mike. And then Minister Tom came up, Mr. Pringle came up and said this. He says, and he was back, back, God don't ask the question unless he plans on doing something about it. Is anything too hard for our God, the God of the universe, the God that before there was a where or when or what or this or that, God spoke everything into being because he's a king and his word is the divine edict and everything he says has to come to pass. And I'm asking you this question so you can get it in your spirit. Is anything too hard for the Lord? God says, I'm going to complete it. That thing that you've been believing me for, I'm going to complete it. That thing that you cried in the middle of the night, that thing that you believed me for, that you, that you gave up eating for, that thing that you fasted for, that thing that you were thinking of me for, that thing that you cried for, that thing that they called you a fool for trusting me for, I'm going to complete that thing. Is anything too hard for me? Is anything too hard for me? You know, me, God, the great I am, the one that they, they called I am for two reasons. Egyptians called everything I am. All their gods, they called them I am. And so when God says I am that I am, one of the things he was saying, not just that you can write a blank check, he was saying I am that all those other gods are pretending to be. Put them all up against me and see who wins. And if you look at the 10 plagues of Israel, every plague that occurred in, the, in, 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 in Egypt during those times, was God killing another God, was killing something that they worshiped, controlling something that they worshiped, every single thing, even down to the death of Pharaoh's son. And he said, watch this, I'm gonna kill your son and he ain't gonna live no more until I say, but my son gonna come and die and raise up on his own will. Cause I'm God, don't play with me. You worship the now, I'll control the now. You worship the, I'll con and what God is saying and everything that he's saying, he says, I am God beside me, there is none. Before me, there was none. God said, I looked to my left and couldn't find nobody. I looked to my right, couldn't find nobody. I went before me and found that I couldn't go before me because there was no one before me. So I went behind me and found that there's no one worthy to stand behind me. So he says, I have sworn by myself, said the Lord. And all it takes for you to ever realize just how big God is, is to go on a cruise and, and, and stand on the boat and look out as far as the eye can see, you see nothing but water. And it's nothing but a drop to God. Nothing but a drop to God. And God says, I spoke all those things into being because I'm God. He says, is anything too hard for me? He says, I'm the God who opened up Sarah's womb, but I'm also the same God that closed Hannah's. I closed Hannah's womb because I wanted her to pray something specific to me. And when she got to the point in her grief, what she would say, God, I don't just want any child, I want a special child, one that you can use. It may be for my good, but it's for your glory. I want something special so that you can use. And God gave her a child named Samuel. And God says, Samuel needs name, his name is God. And so I allowed, while Israel was going in trouble, I allowed my name to grow up in the midst of them. You don't get it. Sometimes God will allow trouble to rise up in your midst so that, and give you a situation so that you can pray through it and your situation becomes an intercession or a break point for everybody else. And sometimes your struggle and your pain, when you give it over to God as a gift, it becomes as a gift. It becomes something that God uses to bless other folk. And he says, is anything too hard for me? 
Samuel grew and Samuel's name means my name, his name is God. God does that over and over in scripture. He closed one womb and he opened another. He opened one womb and he closed another. He says, I'm the same one that when, when, when Peter and the boys was on the boat and, 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 and they saw me walking on the water because that's just what I do. I walk on things that other people shrink in. He says, and, 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 and Peter said, if it be you, bid me to come. And I said, who else can bid me? Come. And the word come stretched like a bridge over troubled water. And Peter walked on the word come and came to him who calls. Because when God calls, how dare you not answer? And Peter walked on the word come. And the word come became like a bridge over troubled water. And Peter walked on that thing. I came to tell you that one word from God can give you the ability to walk over that thing you should be drowning in. Is anything too hard for me? I'm asking this question because there are some things that the enemy has told us before now were impossible. But Jeremiah says, with God and Luke, all things are possible. Let me read you a few of them. Jeremiah said this. He says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? In Genesis, it says, is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return. And by this time next year, Sarah will have and embrace a son. Jeremiah 32, 17 says, ah, Lord God, it is you who made the heaven and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm, nothing is too hard for you. Luke said it this way, for nothing will be impossible with God. Matthew backed it up and said, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are impossible. Isaiah decided to get his lick in on the enemy and says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am the Lord, your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my right hand. Because nothing is too hard for me. Mark said it this way. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. I know that you do all things, so Job said, and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. You see, over and over and over in scripture, God has affirmed that when I declare a thing, it shall be so. That I give you the ability that when you declare a thing, it shall be so. And I don't know who I came to encourage, but, but scripture says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. There are some things that you've been believing God for. And I'm going to tell you, I've been believing God for some family members and some people who, who, who think they walked out of God's life. I've been believing God for some people to rediscover. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. I've been believing God for some people to be saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, I've been believing God for some people to, to, to come back to the Lord. There's some people who, 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 who I know the spirit of God is was on them and in them. And they decided that they were going to try something else. And I can look at them and see how tormented they are when they, when they realize that they're walking away from God and they're running after somebody who don't know where they're going and they're running after something that don't know what they're doing. But I can tell you this, that, that God, I've already placed a, a, a warrant out for their arrest. And I said, God, I want you to bring them to you. See, with man, this seems impossible. But with God, all things are possible when you believe. If he said it, we believe it. I'm believing God that finances will be rectified. I'm believing God that things will change. Things change when you call his name. I'm believing God that this will be the year that things that, that, that were held off from you, 
things that were seem to be pushed away will be will be yours, that they are attainable, that the things, listen, some of you, I've seen some of you lay on floors and pray and believe God for your children. Some of you, I've seen you pray and believe, and some of you, some of us have believed God for our children, have believed God for the things around us, have believed God, and we stood on things that we've yet see come to pass, but how many of you know that our God is willing and he's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that's already working on the inside of you. Our God is awesome. And the songwriter says he can move mountains. Keep you in the valley, hide you from the rain. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Is anything too hard for him? Is anything too hard for him? I know they form weapons against you, but the Bible says that no weapons formed against you shall be able to prosper. I know that the enemy came in one way, but the Bible says that when the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I'm not telling you something that I made up. I'm telling you something that I've read, something that I've heard, because eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for who? For those who love him. 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 And our God is more than enough. Our God is more than enough. And, 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 and I kept hearing God say over and over and over and over again, do you love me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? And so my response is hallelujah. My response is, God, I love you. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. I just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. And so while I'm singing that, I'm seeing Kirsten, legs growing. too late to change. He's already said stuff like that. He's already done it. I've already seen you heal God. I've already seen you heal God. We've already walked in hospital rooms and seen babies with four stages or five stages of cancer be healed. God is too late to change because we've already seen you heal. You're a healer and, 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 and you heal. You stay to the utmost, God. And so, God, I'm believing you that you're no respecter of person. God, that you call God and who you call God, no enemy can put under. And so God, I'm believing you, God. There's some loved ones that we're believing God would come to love you, God, more than anything else, God. We're believing God that salvations, God, would reign in this place, God. We're believing you, God, that you would call souls from the north, the south, the east, and the west. We're believing you, God that drunks would spin around in the bar and get a revelation of who you are. We're believing you, God, that prison doors were open early. We're believing you, God, that crimes would be prevented. God, we're believing you, God. We're believing you, God, and we're going to continue to stand and believe that our God, our God, our God, our God, our God, and if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? I'm telling you, this year, I'm, 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 I'm stepping out. I'm going to believe God for some impossible things. I'm believing God for some impossible things. I'm not only believing God, I'm believing God for some improbable things. I'm believing God for some things that, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a little bit scared to tell you about. But you know what? I'm believing God. I'm going to start telling you some of them. I'm believing God that we're going to see. We're going to see. There's a man named Simeon. And he had, I don't know if y'all remember Simeon in the Bible. It just keeps coming to my mind. He was praying. And he said, he, he, he was praying and, and Israel was in trouble. And, he, and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit hadn't even fallen on the other people yet. But he had been believing God so much that the Holy Spirit just came. I was like, let me go early to see about this boy. And said, Simeon, sir, you will not die until you see Jesus. 
and the Bible records. See, because there are certain things, I told my son the other day, there's certain things, there's certain prerequisites for certain things. You see, you're less likely to have some things happen in some places than you are in others. Amen? Not saying that they can't happen, but Simeon said, until this happens, I'm going to be wherever I can find his presence. And there's probability that you can sense his presence in some places more than you can in others. He says, I'm going to find it. I'm going I'm to seek him. I'm going to seek after him. I'm going to be there. And while Simeon was waiting in the house of the Lord, the presence of God showed up. And Simeon got to reach out his hand. And even though he was in a small form, Simeon got to reach out his hand and hold on to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he looked up and he says, now I can depart in peace because my eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. My eyes have laid on the God already. My eyes have seen God. And the beauty in the thing is that you will recognize him when you see him. God is going to, I believe God is setting us up for something. I don't know what it is or how it is or when it is, but I'm believing God that God is going to bless that God is going to do some things, that God is going to draw you closer to him. I'm believing God that relationships will be restored. I'm believing God that marriages that were going to fall, fail, won't fail. Minister Pringle told us a testimony last night. And I'm because we had testimonies last night, y'all. And worship after the testimony. Big and small. God did them all. And we are believing that was a rhyme, wasn't it? We are believing God that God is going to keep doing it. We are believing God. And so I'm believing that that marriage is going to be saved. I'm believing that people are going to be delivered and set free. I, get tired of me if you want to, but I believe. We are believing. Sister Crystal talked about something there. I'm next. And she talked about how all year when something would happen, she was like, praise God. She would praise God for it and say, who's next? And people will get delivered and just get delivered. And you know what? I'm believing God. Same thing, same thing, same thing. I'm believing God that we are going to see the fruit of what we've been believing him for. And I don't think some of it is going to take a long time to deliver. You better get your expectations up. Because the expectation is the breeding ground for miracles. And when we believe God and when we expect God to do the impossible, God is going to do it. God is going to do it. God is going to do it. I'm going to tell you something that, that happened to me a while back. I remember when we first started pastoring this church. I have a list of men that I always call whenever stuff get a little bit too hectic or a little bit too whatever for me. A lot, uh, 90 something percent of my older men and I'll call them and I'll be like, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And that one particular day when we first started passing the church, I remember, see, because I've been in powerful services before. And I've been in services where the Holy Spirit would fall so hard that we would forget time and space. One time we was in the college ministry, the Holy Spirit fell and we were singing the song, hallelujah, salvation and glory. And the Holy Spirit fell. He is wonderful. We had just finished breakfast. We went in, we sung one song, I don't even remember what that song was. And then we sung that song. And all of a sudden we heard angels and stuff. And twins were over there rolling on the floor, falling out in the spirit. And they were rolling in the same direction. And people were doing this. And I remember Pastor Gray, God had delivered him from something um, that took years. And I remember that oh, one other one of my friends came over. And I remember there was this guy, I didn't even like the guy until that day. And me and him went over and prayed for Pastor Gray. And both of us fell on the floor. And we've been cool ever since. We've been close ever since. And we were slain in the spirit. And some kind of way, we lost track of time. And we missed breakfast. I mean, we missed lunch. We missed dinner. And by the time we came out of that service, one song, the stores were closed. To this day, I have no idea where that time went. I'm not saying you got to stay in church all day, but let me tell you what I am doing. I'm believing God. I am believing God. Y'all ignore the visitors. They, they, they trying to worship too, but 
We're going to believe God. We, go, we got to exterminate after we leave here. But let me tell you something. I'm believing God. The reason why I was telling you the story that the power of God will fall so hard in here that we won't know what to do. The first time, the one of the times it happened, because I'm, I'm used to being in those type of services. But the thing was, at that particular time, it was one of our first services. And I remember I was going to call different people and I was like, nope, he, no, no, he's playing somewhere. Okay, can't call him. Dad is in here, so he's worshiping. Can't, can't. And I remember we was, and I was just going on the list and I said, oh, I'm going to call Pastor Willie. And I called Pastor Willie. I'm telling you for a reason. I'm praying for his, for his healing. I call, that's when I'm believing God for that. Can you write that down? Put it in there, honey. But um, I call Pastor Willie. See, because I'm used to being in the services, but I wasn't used to being in charge of one. See, it's different when the Holy Spirit is falling and somebody else is in charge. You can go up and give a prophetic word, do all this other stuff, yada, yada, blase, blase. But let me tell you the reason why I'm telling you this is because of this. I called Pastor Willie and I said, Pastor Willie, I went in the back and I was almost in tears. And I said, Pastor Willie. And he said, yes, son. He said, how's daughter doing? And I said, she good, she good, she good. Uh, but, but Pastor Willie, listen. I said, the presence of God has fallen so hard. In the, I said, I'm used to being in a service where the presence of God is falling in church and God is doing amazing things. I said, but I, I've never been in charge of a service where God has fallen that hard in here. The presence of God is manifested that hard in here. What do I do? And he laughed at me, y'all. He said, <laughs> he said, son, he said, there are pastors all over the world who would almost kill to have that happening in their service right now. And I said, yes, sir. But he still ain't telling me what to do yet. And I said, well, what do I do? He said, you have one job now. And I said, what? He said, don't get in his way. He said, you have one job now. Don't get in his way. He said, whatever you need to do to keep him there, do it. He said, if you have to stand off in the corner, and he, and he, was, he was short. He said, if you have to stand off in the corner and let it happen, let it happen. If you have to get down on your knees and close your eyes or lay on your face to let it happen, let it happen. He said, whatever you have to do to get out of his way, to facilitate him staying. Do that. Then he said, now go back in service. I'll see you, I'll see you after this. Let me know how it went. And he hung up. And I was stuck. Why am I telling you this? Because God is about to facilitate something in your house and you have one assignment and one assignment alone. Don't get in his way. I'm, 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 I, I, I hear this in my, in my shanana. Don't get in his way. You have one assignment, saints. When God begins to move, you do whatever you have to do to not hinder his moving. To not hinder his moving to not hinder his moving, to not hinder his moving. You got one assignment, you got one job, you got one job, you got one job, you have one job. Don't get in his way. When you, when the Holy Spirit shows up because he is gonna show up in your house. Say, Lord, this house is now yours. You do whatever you need to do. Here's your throne. If you want me to move it, I'll move it wherever you want to sit, but sit in this house. Lord, whatever you're doing, don't do it. With, stay here, God. Stay here, God. Stay here, God. I give you reign. I give you rule, God. Stay here, God. God, whatever you want me to do, God, I'll do it, God. I'll do it, God. Save my babies, God. Save my children, God. Save God, save God, do it, God, heal God, heal right here, God, heal God, move God, move God, please God. 
Heal our marriages, God. Heal, God. Move, God. God, whatever I need to do, God, to get your presence to manifest, God. God, if I have to be like Sarah Phoenician woman, God, if I have to be like her, God, and I have to build a house, God, build an upper room for your presence, God. If I have to put a chair there, God, if I have to put a bed there, God, if I have to put a table there, God, because I know you prepare the table before me in the presence of my own enemies. Whatever I got to do, God, to get you to manifest yourself and stay, God. Stay, God. Stay, God. Stay, God. I remember a pastor one time saying, God, this is your church. Whatever you want me to do, God. I can remember the Holy Spirit falling in that place so hard that the windows broke in, not out in. Let me tell you why the windows broke in. The same reason why it was midnight as Paul and Silas sang praises to God. And the Bible says that all of a sudden everything began to shake. See, when God shows up, he begins to shake everything that ain't stable. Everything that's going to fall off, that needs to fall away from you, God will shake it. Sometimes that can be scary. But he said at midnight, it shook while they sang. And the prison bands were loose. When the presence of God comes in, everybody begins to get loose. If, you, if you're willing to be loose, you're going to be loose. And it says, and all of a sudden, the presence of God. You know, I know that it was more about breaking, the spirit of God breaking in because God will break into any place that's willing to worship him. While the disciples were in the upper room, Jesus busted in and he came through the door. The Bible didn't say the door was open. It just said he came in. Why? I don't care if the door is closed. If you're willing to worship me, it's considered an open invitation and I will show up. And let me tell you what happened. It says immediately the prison bands were loose. You know how I know that that was more about God breaking in? Because in that prison, there was rocks, water in the bottom of the prison, rats, all kind of insects, bad food, bad odor. People chained up and everybody's chains was broke. And the prison guard says, I'm, I got to die because everybody escaped. And they looked in the prison and there was 100% of the prisoners in the prison. Who can make hard prisoners stay in the prison? Nothing but the presence of the Lord. And I'm telling you, God is about to break into your situation. I don't know who, what I'm, I, 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 I still don't grasp the, 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 the the weight of what I'm saying, but I'm telling you, all you got one job, and that's to keep his presence amongst you. I'm telling you what I heard. I'm not telling you, I'm not making, I'm telling you what I'm hearing. Your job for 2023 is to keep the presence of God tabernacled amongst us. Listen, listen, listen. Little boy say, listen, Linda, listen. Everything else is going to take care of itself when we figure out how to get the presence of the God, Lord, to stay with me. Stay with me, 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 stay with me. You and I got a, a, a job, Sister Rachel. We got to get the physical up to stay in our classroom too. Stay with me, God. Stay with me, God. Stay with me, God. God, please. Stop by here. Stay. Not one job. I don't know if you're going to have to pray more. I don't know if you're going to have to lay on your face more. I don't know if you're going to have to, whatever it is you're going to have to do. But you got one job, and that's to keep the presence of the Lord man manifested amongst us. Why? Because God is ready to do some things in your life, in your marriage, in your work, in your finances, in your this and, and our health and everything that we occupy, God is willing to occupy it with us, but we got to call on him. 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 I can read you over a hundred scriptures where it says, is anything too hard for God? But I, I want you to know this. He says, call to me and I will answer you. I don't know why my eyes just popped directly on that one. 
and I will show you great and mighty things that you have not known. There's a secret to getting our family members saved. And sometimes, like Sarah, we're so busy trying to create the move of the flesh because we're trying to do it that we fail to realize that if we can get God to show up, then God will do it for us. God will show you. There's an answer to that test. And it's only found in the presence of the Lord. So before you study, say, Lord, you are the creator of all things. You are the creator of every system. Show me what, I'm, what I need to know. And I promise you, he's going to show you. But your job, you got one job. I, I should have titled this one job. You got one job, and that is to figure out how to get the presence of the Lord to stay with you. How to get the presence of the Lord to, dry, to dwell amongst us. And I'm praying that God do it in your life. I'm praying that God do it in your life. I'm believing God for salvation. I'm believing God for strength. I'm believing God for honor. I'm believing God that he would do. He would restore. He would uproot. He would rebuild. He would do everything that, that he does in your life. Because when God shows up, every good and perfect thing follows. Victory follows the presence of the Lord. Deliverance follows the presence of the Lord. Might follows the presence of the Lord, for it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Everything follows the presence of the Lord. Every good and perfect thing is found in the presence of the Lord. Remember? Because he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadows of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God. See that? In him I will trust. See, everything. Everything that you need is found in his presence. And if that's the case, why do we spend so much time trying to be other place? I want you to stand. I'm, I'm going to be done. But listen, I promise you, this year, God plans to break out amongst us. I know what the politicians, I know what everybody else is saying. I know what all these other people are doing and all these other people are saying. And all these people, all, everybody this and that. Some people prophesying horror. Some people prophesying terror. Some people prophesying this. Some people prophesying that. All I'm, all I'm telling you is that as a child of God, your concern is to be in the presence of your daddy. Because when you are wrapped up in God's arms, it don't matter what passed by you. If you're in the presence of your daddy, it don't matter what comes. It don't matter what happens. Doesn't matter what comes your way because whatever comes your way, he's here. This has happened to me a couple of times. There's a little kid in my classroom, and one time, for some reason, I don't know why, but every time she walks in my classroom, she does this. Shia does the same thing for somebody, but every time she, she does this. Active shooter drill happened, and she does this. She didn't know it wasn't a real drill. It wasn't a drill. But everywhere I went, she was right there. And something in me said, she going to get home, even if I don't. Are you seeing what I'm saying? You see, because... when you get into the presence of God, when things happen and your first response is good things happen. Bad things happen. Uncertainty happens. Fear happens. Whatever happens, if you draw close to God, sometimes you might want to draw close to him just to tell him thank you. Sometimes you draw close to him just to tell him you're afraid. Sometimes you draw close to him just to tell him, God, I just want to be here. We got one job. Our job is to entice the presence of the Lord. Entice the presence of the Lord. Entice the presence of the Lord. Somebody asked me one day, you're a small church. How do y'all get so much accomplished? You 
just show up in his presence. It's my only answer. I don't think I can think of it. We just show up in his presence. We show up and we believe God and God does it. Like Jesus said. They said, Jesus, there's a bunch of people. It's a word for somebody. There's a bunch of people out there and they need to be fed. Send them away. And Jesus said, nah, what you got with you? See, the proof that the presence of God is on you is that you could take a little bit and do a lot with it. But this is the task that he gave the people who draw near to him. I'll bless it and I'll break it. But you give it out. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, you get to eat. You, you, you still go get some fried, but you're going to get to eat too because what you're going to get to eat is going to be exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But he says, but whatever you have, you bring it to me. I'll bless it. And you know what God blesses, nobody can unbless. I'll break it. He's the God of multiplication and division. But you cause them to sit down and get in order. And you give it out. What an awesome God we serve. What an awesome God we serve. And I said all of that. And I didn't fully mention it. He does it because of his great love for us. So here you go. If there's an area that you're believing God for something, please come up and put it in this thing or raise your hand. We can have somebody come pray for you. We can have somebody come to believe for you. We can have somebody to come. I've seen God do so many healings this year. I've seen God heal everything from cancer to you name it. And I'm still believing God that there's so much more to come. I don't know if you're prepared, but will you go on this journey with me? Will you believe God with me for the improbable, for the impossible? Can you believe God with me? I want to play if that's okay, I want to play a song and I want you to declare this song. This song makes a profound statement about God. It's actually on our website. And the song says, and we'll be closing, but I want you to get that thing in your mind that you believe in God for. It says, you're the ultimate. And we trust you. And we'll close. Make this your first offering as you bring your offering up. Or... God, you have Tell me you have the final word. The final word. The final word in my life. In God, your word is settled. It's settled. Forever, you are infinite, you're the ultimate, we trust you, we trust you, you are infinite, you're the ultimate, come on, let's worship, we trust you, give them that thing we in trust you.
trust you, God. Thank you, Father, because you do all things well. So, God, I thank you, God. Thank you, God. I thank you, God. On this first day, of January, Father. God, I even thank you for the time that you've given us with all of our loved ones. God, I thank you, God, for the time you've given me with Darius, Father. I thank you, God, that even though the, today is his heavenly birthday, God, I thank you, God, that you do all things well. And so, God, we honor you, God. We trust you, God. God, I speak life over your people, God. And I say, God, that you do all things well. And so, God, I speak life over your people, God, that they'll be blessed in the city, they'll be blessed in the field, that they'll be blessed wherever they come and wherever they go, God. I speak, God, that their enemies will be given a choice. They can either come at us one way if we and seven, or God, but or they can get a revelation of who you are and worship with us, God. God, we know that it's not your will that anyone should perish, but that all should come and have everlasting life. And so, God, we even speak salvation over our enemies, God. That they would change their mind and change their direction. God, I pray, Lord, that because your word is passed on and out, God, I bless the saints of God and everything that comes from them, God. I pray over their seed, God, that you would bless to the third and fourth and thousandth generation even, God. God, I speak life over them, God, that salvation belongs to you. And so, God, we're believing you for deliverance, God. God, I thank you, God, that they'll have a safe trip. I pray, Lord, that with long life, they'll satisfy you, God, and show you their salvation. God, I speak it right now in the name of Jesus. God, as we pray over your people, God, I pray over your church, God, that this year we would get the message right. And so, God, I bless you. We speak life into every situation that we come in contact with, God. And so, God, help us to be mindful as we do our one job in 2023, which is keep your presence amongst us. And so, God, we commit to pursuing you in everything that we do. Inhabit the praises of your people, God. We bless you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And amen. Listen, I want you to enjoy the peace of the Lord. Amen. Whew.